Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Good afternoon. My name is Ahmad from the Business Development of SME Banking Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad and it is a pleasure for me to welcome all the viewers present here today for the webinar series presented by Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad. Our focus today is Islamic finance and digital enablement towards building halal businesses. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question box in your control panel. Our relationship heads will attend to you during the session or in the interest of time, leave your email addresses as well. And we will send the answers by email on the same day. And yes, please let us have your name and organization when writing in. Alternatively, you can scan the QR code when displayed on screen and channel your inquiries to our email. Ladies and gentlemen, Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad was established in 1983 as the nation's first Islamic bank. To date, the bank has a network of 144 branches and more than 1,900 sub-service terminals nationwide. To meet the diversity of the public's financial needs, Bank Islam offers more than 70 Sharia-based banking products and services, covering personal and business banking, which cater to Muslim and non-Muslim. On behalf of Bank Malaysia Berhad, allow me to take the opportunity to congratulate Halal Development Corporation for its successful execution of the World Halal Business Conference and the launching of the Halal Integrated Platform at the opening ceremony today. Bank Islam is the strategic partner of Halal Development Corporation to jointly collaborate and promoting and facilitating the participation and growth of Malaysia Halal ecosystem towards embarking on the digital transformation journey and capacity building. Ladies and gentlemen, in this session, we have a distinguished panel to share industry insight on Islamic finance and digital enablement towards building halal businesses. In this challenging business landscape, entrepreneurs need to be constantly alert and adapt to the rapid changes. In order to stay relevant, whilst ensuring business growth and sustainability, SMEs embarking on halal businesses need to be ready for expansion and global export through digitalization and having the right financial tools. Among the key elements of a successful business is by having a comprehensive financial support, effective cash flow, stability management, and robust digital enablement plan. Through this platform, we take the opportunity to share some industry insight related to Islamic financing solutions and the importance of digitalization for SMEs to become future ready and thrive in the digital era. Our panelists comprise of Rizal Yusuf, who is the head of SME banking, Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad, Rizal has over 20 years experience specializing in the banking industry, particularly in the scope of SME and commercial banking. His previous role as a head of strategic planning had charted the SME business for a local bank. He also served in the several foreign and local banking institutions that provided him sound exposure to the local Asia Pacific and Australian SME markets. Rizal is passionate in supporting local SMEs to thrive in the Malaysians and the global markets. With the national agenda in mind, he strongly advocates for closer collaboration between the public sectors, private sectors, and the Islamic financial institution to address the gaps and the needs within the SME sectors. He also a strong supporter of the Halal Agenda for the Development of SME Halal Business Champion by the Halal Development Corporation. Secondly, we have also with us Faisal Jaffa, Assistant General Manager, Consumer Banking, Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad. Faisal Jaffa has over 20 years of experience in the banking industry and holds a degree in business administration from University Utara Malaysia. Having joined Bank Islam in 2004, he has served multiple positions such as Regional, Man Consum uh, regional Consumer Business Manager and Regional Manager, Southern Region. Faisal was uh, the Deputy Chairman, National Card Group from 2018 to 2019 and Head of Card of Bank Islam Card Centre before his current appointment as the Head Distribution Channel Consumer Banking Division. Panelists, welcome and thank you for your participation. For those who have just joined us, this session covers the sharing industry insight on Islamic finance and digital enablement towards building halal businesses by the two distinguished and experienced speakers from Bank Islam. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question box and in your control panel. Our relationship heads will attend to you during the session or in the interest of time. Leave your name, organization, and email address as well. and We will send the answers via email on the same day. Alternatively, you can scan the QR code when displayed on screen and channel your inquiries to our email. Let's begin with our first panelist, Rizal Yusuf, to share insights on revolutionizing SMEs through halal and digitalization. Over to you. 
Mr. Rizal. Thank you, Ahmad. Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone. Alhamdulillah, we have earlier witnessed the opening of the World Halal Business Conference and the launching of Halal Integrated Platform. My utmost congratulations to Halal Development Corporation for their milestone achievements today. I would also like to thank all virtual attendees present here today to join us in this session on Islamic finance and digital enablement towards building halal businesses. Throughout this session, feel free to post your questions and our RMs will attend to you. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen and channel your inquiries to your email. To further understand how Bank Islam through the SME Banking Division play its role supporting, in supporting the SMEs, let me proceed with sharing insights on revolutionizing SMEs through halal and digitalization. Amongst the topics that will be discussed today are halal SME ecosystems, halal export opportunities, revolutionized banking for SMEs, SMEs beyond pandemic, and understand financial planning. This is basically looking at the whole halal SME ecosystem for the Malaysian market. And let me just discuss with you on the importance of the SMEs in the economy, in the global economy. As we all know, or as we can see here in this graph, the global market for potential halal product is about USD 2.3 trillion, which consists of processed FMB, bakery products, cosmetics and personal care, confectionery, nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, and primary meat. These are a huge market where SMEs can tap into, especially in the halal industries. Our current number of SMEs in Malaysia is about 987,000, of which it's only about 7,000 who are halal certified, and only 2,000, uh, about 1,900 to 2,000 who are participating in halal certification of exporters, which amounts to only 40 billion ringgit. This is, uh, I would say, a lot of room for, for improvement, for opportunities for the SMEs to tap into. Now let's look at the halal journey ecosystem, where we start from the SME itself. It can be either FNB, pharmaceuticals, and whatnot. Then it goes to HDC to, uh, for any advisory and guidance to meet the requirements for halal applications through JAKIM. The next journey, which is the third one, is through SME Banking, Bank Islam, whereby uh, Bank Islam, SME Banking would be able to provide financial assistance to the SMEs involved. Once they are ready, they can go to JAKIM for the halal certification as the certification in Malaysia is being done by JAKIM. And the fifth one is to go on the expansion mode whereby you are going for the expansion on the local market as well as the international market. This is where you will uh, look into other government agencies that would be able to assist you to go for export market such as Madrid. Oh my God. There are a lot of other initiatives in halal business and SMEs. Take, for example, the HDC Halal Development Corporation and uh, with a collaboration with Bank Islam, whereby we have um, uh, created a funding portfolio of 100 million to support the halal industry in Malaysia. Now let's look at halal export opportunities for the SMEs business expansion. As reported by HDC, Malaysia recorded an increase of 0.2 billion in domestic direct investment into Malaysian halal parks in 2020, signaling that the local halal industry is still growing despite the many ongoing challenges. Now, to date, Malaysian halal parks have attracted a cumulative total of 16.1 billion in investment since 2011. Of this, about 9.5 billion or 59% is foreign direct investment, while 6.6 .6 billion is domestic investment. A total of 295 companies are currently in operation throughout the 21 halal parks across Malaysia, with 42 companies being multinational companies, while 253 companies are locally owned corporations. These are among the list of trade financing products that is available through our Go Halal SME financing. As you can see here, you have trade working, uh, capital financing, accepted, Alman accepted bills, trade, tawaruk, and whatnot. So these are among the standard tools that would be able to help you to go for the export market, to venture into the export market, 
especially for the SMEs. Let's look at how we can revolutionize banking for the SMEs, where we look at the paradigm shift in halal technology. Digital presence marks a vast opportunity for the SMEs. There are several reasons why a business needs to establish its online presence. Amongst other things are reaching out to more people as digital presence would be able to cast a bigger net towards the market. You would also be able to establish your brand in these new channels that is growing rapidly. You can also say that it is making it easier to build relationship with customers that allows the business to communicate with the target audience and create meaningful relationship. Being a digital channel, it allows easy access that can help the customer easily access your products and services. Now, Bank Islam have established a halal digital platform that would be able to help the SMEs to go into this digital channel. It is easily accessible uh, where it provides business insights and resource guides and enabler to expand digital presence through branding and effective marketing strategies. It is also an opportunity to market products locally and abroad, whereby we have business matching and a marketplace where you would be able to showcase your product in this SME expert platform for free. The way we see it, it is a hassle-free application to wide range of financial solutions that is made available through this digital platform. Through SME Expert, you would also be able to expand your business network and penetrate untapped market opportunities globally and locally. Priorities to the merchant participant in Bank Islam during trade shows and exhibitions are also given to our customers that, is, that has embarked and enrolled into SME Expert by Bank Islam. And they would also be able to enjoy attractive deals with partner merchants. Let's look at the introduction video of the SME Expert that I will share with you. It will be a very short, interesting video, an innovative one. You can also download the SME Expert through Apple App Store, Google Play, and App Gallery, where we'll have a campaign from 9 to 22nd September, where you will be able to win prizes. Let's see the short video on that as well. Let's look at SMEs beyond pandemic and how we can vaccinate your business to ensure sustainability. There are several relief assistance provided to SMEs, which is uh, from Bank Negara and the Malaysian financial industries. Amongst few packages that is made available are the TRRF fund, targeted relief and recovery facility. And the size of funds is up to 6 billion whereby the SMEs would be able to apply for up to 500,000 ringgit with an, uh, an offered rate up to 3.5%. Second one is the SME automation and digitalization facility where SMEs would like to go for automation, we would be able to fund the SMEs using these funds that have been uh, uh, given or have been uh, supplied by Bank Negara. The fourth one is the Panjana Tourism Fund, whereby we are supporting the tourism industry to stay afloat during these trying times 
where they would be able to apply for up to 500,000 to support their business at these challenging times. Next one is the targeted Pomuli and repayment system uh, assistance, whereby they would be able to uh, apply a moratorium for up to six months as a payment holiday. Being in business and as part of being a successful SME, it is important to understand financial planning. And let's us look at how to improve your financial literacy uh, in these challenging times, especially. Now, developing financial literacy to improve your financial, personal finances involves learning and practicing a variety of skills relating to budgeting, managing and paying of debts, understanding credit and investment products, and so on. There are several tips that we can look into. The first one will be creating a budget for your business. The second one that we're looking at is investment in Takaful and investment in business future and whatnot. Investment in Takaful is for your business uh, coverage and protection for your business. The next one is to get credit report and to, uh, to maintain a proper credit report check. Keep your documents and accounts in order, manage debts, manage your cash flow properly, and to manage bills and expenses. And some of the financial management tips, which is close to what I think is right, are the points that is pointed out earlier and where banks will normally look into when giving out um, uh, financial advice and also financial support. The first one will be to manage receivables. So as you can see, uh, receivables uh, are accrued and cash flows are the blood or the lifeline of a business. Therefore, it is very important for you to manage the receivables. Managing costs is very important to ensure sustain sustainability. There are big costs, there are small costs, and it is important for us to be uh, 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 not to be pennywise and pound foolish. The third one, a credit report where you have CITOS, secrets, and whatnot. And these are the reports that you have really have to look into to ensure that it is a positive reflection of your business. Maintain a good conduct of account throughout your business to ensure survival and growth because most of the creditors will be looking at good conducts good account conduct of the business for any uh, new facility to be uh, given to the business. Do a forecast and budgeting for your business. And most importantly, talk to your finances for any Pemuli package in case payment holiday is needed. Because in this trying time, you have a lot and a lot of help coming in from the financiers, coming in from the regulators or from the Malaysian government on how we can, we can uh, make sure that your cash flow is at check. These payment holidays can be in the form of moratorium, as we all know, for six months. And it's a great help for SMEs and for the businesses to stay afloat. Another important aspect in this challenging environment is to go digital. Now, digitizing your business to expand channels and market coverage is most important. There are few, there are SMEs that doesn't uh, really make it in this uh, trying time, and, but there are also SMEs that strive in this challenging environment. The key to that is opening the market and opening it through new channels, especially through digital channels then they would be able to prosper and weather uh, through the economic condition, especially in these trying times. Last one that I would like to share is business automation. As more automation that we are adopting or that the SMEs are adopting, you can go for cost saving and hence it will um, improve your business efficiency. Now, simply you can scan and talk to us of your growth plan and you can also email to us on smeassist at bankislam.com.my 
As I end my presentation, I once again thank you for your time to join us this afternoon and I hope that this session has given you a much clearer understanding of how Malaysian SMEs will benefit in becoming future ready through the embarking of halal business and digitalization. We welcome the opportunity to talk to you in the near future and discuss on how we can assist to help you achieve your growth plans. Wishing you a good day ahead. Wabilahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you for your insights, Rizal. Ladies and gentlemen, the world has changed due to COVID-19 pandemics impacting the world economy, business activities, and people. But digitalization has been a key in helping many people and businesses adapt and overcome challenges and even pave way to a new growth and opportunities. The key takeaway from Rizal's insight is that it is important for SMEs to adopt digitalization and have the right financial tools to future-proof your business and become ready for expansion and global export. Before we move to our next panel, for those who have just joined us, this session is the sharing of industry insight on Islamic finance and digital enablement towards building halal businesses by two distinguished and experienced speakers from Bank Islam. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question box in your control panel. Our relationship heads will attend to you during the session or in the interest of time, leave your name, organization and email address and we will send answers via email on the same day. Alternatively, you can scan the QR code when displayed on the screen and channel your inquiries to our email. Let me now turn to Faisal Jakfa, Assistant General Manager, Consumer Banking Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad, to share his insight how corporate business credit card can help you and your organization in sourcing and managing daily cash flow effectively for your business. Welcome, Faisal. Over to you now. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad, our moderator for today's session and the organizer Halal Development Corporation for inviting us to participate in a webinar series of World Halal Business Conference uh, 2021 and providing us an opportunity to share the best of what Business Credit Card can offer to you as an entrepreneur and how it can facilitate to suit your business organization need. Today, with a very challenging business world, that we currently facing, your sustainability in the market is so crucially important. To sustain your organization must have a stable and healthy financial cash flow in running your daily business activities. Government, semi-government and private parties uh, such as finance, financial institutions do offer grant packages, resources as to help the business to stay afloat in these uncertainty hard times. But do allow and let me share on how business credit card can help you and your organization in sourcing and managing daily cash flow effectively for your businesses. <clears throat> financial flexibility. When we talk about financial flexibility, Business credit card can create your business the power to grow through effective working capital management. So how business credit card able to do that? First, with business credit card, you would have the immediate access for cash flow in time of emergency. If your organization required for an immediate additional cash flow, you would be able to withdraw cash depending on the approved limit and available credit of your business credit card. For example, if your business credit card has a financing limit of fifty thousand, you may able to cash out to you may be able to cash out up to certain amount as to cater your business expenses. It's depending on the issuing banks. The secondly, business credit card is a revolving credit facility. What does it mean? by revolving credit facility. A revolving credit facility will allow your business the flexibility to assess money, money up to the financial limit provided by the bank at any time when needed. Each payment, each payment made to the card would replenish the amount available in the card and the card can be used over and over again. In simple explanation, 
the business credit card will it enables you to withdraw money within the financing limit provided to fund your business then when the monthly credit card statement comes you need to pay the outstanding balance at least of minimum payment of five percent from the total outstanding balance before the payment due date to avoid the card usage being blocked the cycle will continue as long as you still hold the credit card with good standing behavior thirdly bank will give 20 days profit free period for the business owner to pay for any retail transaction made in business credit card hence with this 20 days profit free period business owner will have more flexibility to make payment and can hold more cash for longer time having said that the business owner can proficiently invest the same cash elsewhere to earn more profit return and peace of mind rather than creating hassle to find other source of funding building your credit what does it mean building your credit why is the need to building your credit how how to build your credit building credit building credit is to have people build credit and your payments are reported to credit bureaus in order to build a good credit score you must first establish credit establishing credit means beginning your credit history by obtaining by obtaining a financing or line of credit such as credit card it is essential for an organization to achieve a good credit score as a proof of a sound and healthy financial health of the organizations hence should you want to expand your business organization in the future and want to apply for higher amount of financing it will be easier for the bank or financial institution to evaluate and assess your organization credit capabilities or your credit character to pay and by having a good credit score there is a higher chances for your financing application to obtain approval one easy way and the best way for you to beat your business credit is by using business card facility but how number one making payment on time is important factors in building a sound and good credit behavior for business credit card you need to ensure of servicing at least the minimum payment of five percent of outstanding balance shown in your monthly credit card statement in comparison to term financing you need to set a fixed amount monthly you will be tied up with fixed monthly commitment hence business credit card is better flexible and easier option to create your good and sound credit behavior the second one business also business must know steps to improve their credit score for example ensure the credit card usage not exceed the financing limit do not miss payment and catch up on past due accounts by using your business credit card regularly or frequently with good payment record it proves the vibrancy of your business and organization in managing credit and justifying your credit behavior pattern managing expenses managing expenses can be one of the most time consuming parts of running business it is very integral part of an organization to ensure their business expenses is being closely monitored let's share how business credit card can make the progress a little less painful business credit card provide a good tracking and easy monitoring of business expenses with one single consolidated credit card statement monthly it can easter and it, it can ease and reduce potential delay in the reconciliation of your business expenses it would also hassle out on manual receipt checking or manual receipt tracking on each pending main also the tax filing on business expenses can be easily prepared 
based on the credit card statement compilation. Instead of checking, instead of checking and retrieving on each individual physical payment receipts. So by using business credit card, you will also find it is easy to identify and analyze companies, companies spending and overheads. You will be able to prudently manage your company spending by controlling or by restrict, restricting the usage of business credit card on certain business related expenses only. You can also nominate your selected authorized staff to hold the business credit card. At the same time, you will find your organization, organization would, would reduce the need of uh, using cash for business related expenses. The nominated staff must only use the business credit card when handling or dealing on company related spending. No petty cash requires, hence you will also minimize the experience of heavy cash flow issue. I give you one example. During business trip, the company does not require to provide extra cash money to the staff on hotel accommodation and flight, flight ticket. So less risk of cash money loss in transit. At the same time, has a free for staff as he or she will no longer need to claim for using uh, his own pocket money since all business related expenses must be using the business credit card. Additionally, you may opt to perform auto billing on your business utilities payment using your business credit card. By this option, you will be able to avoid unnecessary missing on the due date of paying your company's utilities bill, which, which may interrupt your daily business operation. In, in comparison with cash, uh, for every spending in your business credit card, you will be entitled for loyalty points, of which the accumulated points can be ready for vouchers, uh, electrical appliances, gadgets, and etc. You may also utilize the redemption items for your organization, annual family day, or annual dinner. Otherwise, you may also use the vouchers or redemption items for donations to charity bodies as to cater your company's corporate social responsibilities purposes. So these are all the beauties of using Visa Credit Card, which you will not enjoy if you use cash. Some bank or financial institution also offer other privileges such as a free access to premium launch, discounted promo and selected hotel and FMB restaurant and also exclusive golf privileges. With all the items and points mentioned above on the how business credit card will help in managing your organization cash flow management, we are pleased we are pleased to share the that we are pleased to share that at Bank Islam we do have business credit card that is Bank Islam Visa Infinite Business Credit Card I. We are proud to share that Bank Islam Visa Internet Business Credit Card is the first Islamic fully Sharia compliant business credit card in Malaysia, which was launched back in year in year 2016. This Bank Islam Visa Internet Business Credit Card is issued uh, for the following segments: owner of SME or SMI, Bank Islam corporate and commercial customer, selected set selected self proprietor, business owner, professional, and also, but last but not least, the JLC, government agencies and universities. On the other hand, Bank Islam also issued individual fully share compliance credit card I. Four type, four type of individual credit card that we offered right now are business card, uh, MasterCard Gold, Visa Gold, MasterCard Platinum, Visa Platinum, MasterCard World, and also Visa Infinite. So why bank start with the internet business credit card? Okay. First, fully share business credit card in Malaysia. There is no compounding finance charge elements involved. And we offer 20 days profit charge free period as we have earlier mentioned, an annual fee of 777 ringgit for each card issued shall be unconditionally with. Financing limit up to 250,000 subject to approval and credit standing. Then our cardholder also will be given a three times complimentary access to Plaza launch in Malaysia and Singapore per card yearly. 
The three watt royalty program for every one ringgit spent will entitle for one true fine. The accumulated fine may be redeemed for vouchers, electrical lenses, gadget, and etc. And then also we provide the consolidated monthly statement for easy monitoring on usage on on each card holder. <laughs> so and like I mentioned, the stock bank service say Fidel Business Card is a worldwide accepted to enhance an exclusive lifestyle with no boundaries. With that, we conclude our talk sharing session. Thank you for being with us for the past 20 minutes. And if you have uh, if you require further information, you may visit our website at www.payingslam.com. You may also leave your message in the chat box for any inquiries. We shall be happy to assist and respond to your inquiries. With that, thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for your insight, Faisal. So these are all the beauties of using corporate credit card with you. Will not enjoy if you use cash. Thank you again, Faisal. Ladies and gentlemen, through this platform, we have shared with you some industry insight related to Islamic financing solutions and the importance of digitalization for SMEs to become future-ready and thrive in digital era. We have also introduced to you the SME Expert mobile app developed by Bank Islam to support the SME's ecosystems towards improving its business practice through digitalization, financial inclusion, and to enable the SMEs to grow their business with ease by having the right knowledge, comprehensive financial support, and international halal, halal market outreach. SME Expert will serve the SMEs as a comprehensive one-stop SME platform that would assist the SMEs to enhance knowledge, strengthen financial well-being, and build significant business network. With information and access to assistance from the relevant government agencies, business partners, and financial services. SME experts serve as a digital marketing platform to promote SMEs, products, and services of various sectors, whether as B2B, business to business, or B2C, business to customers platform. It is must have an app for SMEs entrepreneurs that envision to elevate their business to amazing success. In conjunction with the launching of SME Expert at the soft launch of the World Halal Business, Con Business Conference 2021, last August 27, Bank Islam is running a 99 sign up and win user campaign starting from today, 9 September to 22nd September 2021. Be among the first 99 users to sign up and win up to 500 shopping vouchers. SME Expert is available on Apple App Store, Google Play, and Huawei App Gallery. Just download the SME Expert app and sign up as a new member with no registration cost or subscription fees to enjoy the great deals from our merchant partners or increase your market outreach by becoming our merchant partners. All info is available on the app itself. Ladies and gentlemen, before we end the session, let's hear a short video from our Chief Economist, Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad, Dr. Muhammad Abzanizam Abdul Rashid. On that note, we say thank you so very much for having joined us for this webinar session presented by Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad. We welcome the opportunity to talk to you in the near future and discuss on how we can assist to help you achieve your growth plan. Thank you as well to our speakers, Rizal Yusof, Head of SME Banking, and Faisal Jafar, Assistant General Manager of Consumer Banking. Congratulations again to Halal Development Corporation for its successful run of the World Halal Business Conference. Wishing you a good day ahead. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan salam sejahtera. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Muhammad Afzani Zambin Abdul Rashid, Chief Economist of Bank Islam Malaysia. Uh, first of all, I would like to express gratitude to uh, the organizers for having me here uh, to share my thoughts and insights on the world halal markets and uh, how it can relate to the macroeconomic views. Especially now, we are very much um, been dealing with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and thus far, although the uh, situation has been quite uh, forthcoming, especially in regards to the vaccination program, but there are still pockets of concerns and this uh, concerns which uh, pretty much uh, hinges on the, uh, the emergence of the new uh, variants on uh, COVID-19 viruses uh, have actually give rise to the, you know, the extent of the reopening of the economy, the pace of the reopening of the economy. So um, 
how this would play out uh, going forward, uh, especially perhaps next year, and how it could, you know, can be related to uh, the world halal economy. Uh, first of all, let me allow me to share my PowerPoint slides for this uh, uh, program. Okay, the title essentially is about the outlook for the economy. Um, the reason why I chose this topic, uh, like I said earlier on, uh, we are still concerned about the how the economy will went out at a time when um, there are still uh, concerns over the, uh, the extent of the virus. While we are quite uh, happy to see that the vaccination program has been proceeded quite well, but there are still instances that uh, certain jurisdiction is going back to periods of lockdowns intermittently. So uh, how we should navigate uh, this type of economy and, and what it means in terms of the halal economy. Okay, uh, before we get started, perhaps it is best for us to see what are the latest assessment by the major institutions like uh, the National Monetary Fund? Uh, this was in July this year, whereby the uh, IMF has actually, uh, you know, uh, shared their, their latest forecasts for the global economy. They are projecting that world output, which is essentially your global GDP, to grow, expected to grow by 6% this year whereby it is very much unchanged from the previous forecast that was made in April. And next year, it is uh, expected that the economy could actually accelerate it further to 4.9%. While there's no changes in terms of the, uh, the current year forecast, but they have actually tweaked the forecast for the emerging markets and the developing economies by 0.4 percentage points, while keeping the advanced economic growth, well, sorry, uh, while upping the, uh, uh, the growth forecast for the advanced economies by 0.5 percentage points. So in their assessment is that, that the recovery will happen, but it's likely to be uneven. And this is simply because of the rollout of the vaccination and whereby in the advanced economies, the, the vaccination program rollout has been uh, proceeded quite uh, uh, forthcoming, and this has allowed them to uh, to reopen their economies. But on the other hand, on the contrary, the emerging markets are facing uh, a lot of speed bumps in this respect. Therefore, uh, the extent of the reopening of the economy may not uh, happen in a in a similar fashion. And 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 as we uh, I mean, we have been seeing this trend, you know, uh, whereby the periods of lockdowns keep on resurfing again as the, uh, uh, the new cases has started to shut up again intermittently. So uh, because of this, uh, the pace of reop reopening of the economy may not be so consistent in this region. And, and therefore, uh, in terms of the recovery, there's, there's a lot of, of uncertainties in respect to emerging market and developing economies. So in a nutshell, uh, it's going to be uneven. And therefore, in terms of policy making, I think at least within the emerging market, we shall expect the fiscal policies, the monetary policies will continue to remain accommodative, will, will remain continue to, exp to be expansionary in order to support the, 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 the economic recovery process. And then we look at the, uh, the, the, the I would say this is quite a, a real time uh, data in respect to how uh, people would actually uh, moving from one place to another. And, and from the Google Mobility Report, you can see that uh, generally speaking, uh, people tend to stay at home most of the time. Um, and and that, that goes to show that, you know, um, um, uh, people are still concerned about the uh, uh, about the virus. Uh, while there is a, a huge number in terms of vaccination program, and and of course, uh, certain jurisdiction <coughs> has started to reimpose, uh, you know, uh, the, the the lockdown. In, in our case, uh, uh, MCO. But so far, uh, we have seen quite a, a good uh, attraction in terms of our national recovery plans, whereby certain states uh, have actually migrated 
to stage two to stage three, and and perhaps uh, hopefully uh, there will be more uh, reopening of the economy along the way. But nonetheless, perhaps judging from this data, I think uh, maybe people are still wary about the uh, risk of getting infected, and perhaps uh, because of the uh, technology. Uh, working from home perhaps is the ideal way of uh, mitigating the uh, the risk associated to the COVID-19 uh, infection. So we could see that the, uh, most of uh, perhaps in, in, in Malaysia, you can see that the percentage who are in the residential area are still in positive territory versus those in the workplace, which is still in the negative theory. That goes to show that a lot of people in Malaysia are still residing at their own residential areas uh, and, and, and perhaps try to uh, distancing themselves from getting, uh, I mean, the risk of getting infected from the COVID-19. So these uh, dynamics would actually, you know, uh, shape how the economic activities would uh, proceed uh, thereafter. And, and perhaps these narratives of new normals, the you know, uh, leveraging on technology is something that will continue to take place and it will be our, our lifestyle, uh, lifestyle even post a uh, uh, pandemic. And then, uh, like I said, uh, the journey towards vaccination is, is quite uh, decent to a large degree. But again, the, the trend is, is not really similar. You could see that the uh, African uh, region uh, still uh, lagging behind, but uh, those, uh, I mean, the regions in Europe, in America, you could see that the vaccination program has been uh, very substantial. And therefore, um, these economies would actually uh, stand to benefit, stand to, you know, to be reopened more uh, actively and thereby uh, allowing more, uh, you know, GDP to be created along the way, so to speak. So uh, uh, perhaps this really much, you know, resonates well with the IMF assessments that the re recovery will take place, but it's going to be uneven. And then, uh, 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 Talk, when we talk about uh, you know um, uh, the policy response, especially from the from the monetary authorities, from the central banks, uh, we could see uh, the zero interest rate policy has been uh, prevalent, and uh, uh, countries like the U.S., Japan, uh, even in Europe, uh, they continue to exercise the quantitative easing, uh, which essentially means this they're, they're just pouring in more cash in the system. And the same dynamics actually has happened in, in, in this region, in Asia. Uh, we could see that the money supply, essentially when we look at the M1, which is the narrowest uh, definition of money, has been growing uh, uh, since last year. So that would mean that there's a lot of cash, there's, there's plenty of cash laying around in the economy. And, 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 and for this cash to be transacted, it will be hinges upon uh, on the on the reopening of the economy. So while we are seeing uh, a vaccination program has has been done has been ongoing quite well, but perhaps uh, people are still hesitant to spend. But I think once the dust is clear, once you are getting used to uh, the new environment, uh, people talk about living with COVID nineteen. Uh, perhaps this cash will be started to get more active in terms of transaction, in terms of how, I mean, simply because of this, uh, the velocity could actually could pick up its pace, then we can expect uh, the recovery could be more sustainable going forward. So these are the, the evidence that, state, that says that there's a lot of resources in the economy, but perhaps because of the concern over COVID-19, uh, people are holding back their, their uh, their, their spending pattern. Uh, for Malaysia, for instance, uh, people are talking about e-commerce, for instance, as a platform for people to, to transact. But if you look at the amount of expenditure, it's only accounted about one third of total spending in Malaysia in 2019. So it goes to show that while e-commerce uh, e uh, is a good uh, substitution in terms of how people could spend, 
but it may not be a perfect substitution. So it would mean that people are still needing to go to shop, you know, to go to, I mean, to experience the, the, the products, you know. Uh, for instance, like in the, in this, the, the tourism industry, I think there is no way that we could, uh, uh, you know, indulge in tourism by just looking at, the, you know, your smart devices. The tourism, you need to experience it physically. You have to go there, you have to be there. And, and that for now is still very much limited, but perhaps once uh, the economy has really re uh, has been reopened more uh, comprehensive, comprehensively, then we shall expect more activities to be more lively. And we know that this can then would translate more, uh, this cash, you know, uh, laying around in the system could be channeled to these uh, key industries like uh, uh, tourism related industries like aviation, hotels, and and F and B. So, what I'm trying to say is this: is that uh, there are hopes that you know uh, uh, economy could recover fast, but this is very much hinges upon the, the uh, on the, the the pace of the reopening of the economy. And uh, looking at the uh, the price of the money, um, it's very much uh, on the low side. And it has been ongoing for, for, for quite a while, actually, more than a decade, actually, several decades, actually, to be, to be precise, whereby the interest rate environment has been very, very low. And while uh, it's low, it has to, I think, uh, to take away from this. Uh, obviously, um, one, you need, would need to take more risk in order to gain more, uh, I mean, uh, respectable returns. So in that sense, uh, any business, any investors who need to, to take on more risk in order to uh, deliver uh, respectable returns to your uh, investors. And it also offers an opportunity for businesses to lower their cost of funds. So perhaps these are the main key takeaways uh, as a result of these macroeconomic trends, whereby interest rate has been low for quite some time. It, 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 it will continue to remain so. Uh, uh, in the years to come. So I think uh, uh, businesses, even, even in, in halal uh, industries, could actually think about uh, their plans for expansion, perhaps, since the price of money is, is, is very, very low at the moment. So um, what is our take on the um, economy and, and, and relation with other products and services? I think, uh, like I said, like I, I've been repeating these points uh, more often than not that, you know, the strength of the economic recovery is, is, is highly, uncertain, uh, uh, highly uncertain given the nature of the shocks. And um, given that, you know, uh, the high vac vaccination rate is actually, uh, is the key, uh, critical success factor uh, for the economy to be reopened. And that actually has happened in terms of the vaccination. Uh, so we shall expect more, uh, I would say, at least better economic activities ahead. So uh, that would mean that there were no opportunities for, for, for any business, including the halal business. And in respect to economic policies, um, while there are uh, concerns that, you know, the monetary authorities would begin to hike up the interest rates. But I think in the recent data from the US, especially with respect to their labor markets for the month of August. So we can see that, you know, uh, there are still pockets of uh, weaknesses. That would mean, you know, uh, the scarring effect are so real that we actually necessitates that the policymakers, economic policies makers, we need to ensure that their policy will continue to remain supportive. And, and therefore, I think uh, it resonates well with the, our, our thesis that, you know, the interest rate could actually be uh, to remain low, lower for longer. And uh, I think last but not least, I think the pandemic has actually taught us about the importance of good hygiene uh, practices. And again, this could really, really uh, resonate pretty much well with uh, a halal economy. And, and in fact, it, it, perhaps it has opened up a space for halal products and services to thrive, given that you know, um, good hygiene practices are deemed to have a universal, universal values. Although the word halal itself coming out from the uh, Arabic terms and it is closely uh, associated to Islam, but I think the universal values attached to it 
could actually uh, be accepted and become a, 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 a way of life. Uh, and therefore, this is where I think the halal industry could actually, you know, offer uh, a, a value, a good value proposition to the prospective customers, to prospective clients, and 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 therefore, um, and it can actually, you know, help to uh, promote the growth of halal economy. Uh, although we are still seeing a, a focus of uncertainty, uncertainties as a result of the uh, ongoing uh, battle against uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. So I think that would be all from me. Uh, in terms of the um, uh, how uh, me as an economist see uh, the world actually could actually evolve uh, and 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 perhaps you know how the halal uh, economy or halal industry players should position themselves by taking into account the uh, uh, informations the insights uh, on the macroeconomic perspective. So with that, I, I conclude my, my presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention. Nama saya Muhammad Nabi Daud bin Abdul Rashid, mempunyai tiga orang anak. Kerja saya berniaga. Dalam masa pandemik, memang perniagaan kami terjejas dengan teruk. Bagi saya yang berniaga dah melebihi 10 tahun lebih, amat terkesan sekali. Masa PKP memang membebankan pada saya perniaga kecil ni dari segi gaji pekerja, sewa kena bayar sebab kos terlalu tinggi bagi saya. Okay, saya salah seorang pelanggan Bank Islam dan saya telah mengambil moratorium yang diberikan oleh Bank Islam. Moratorium ni untuk meringankan beban saya. Saya contohnya boleh saya cover untuk gaji pekerja, untuk bayar sewa kedai. Saya menggalakkanlah pada orang di luar sana yang mana yang teramat terkesan sekali. Ambillah moratorium yang Bank Islam sediakan bagi meringankan beban yang kita ada. Saya pergi branch dan saya jumpa dengan pegawai yang ada. Mereka memang memudahkan kerja saya. Alhamdulillah, moratorium yang telah diberikan bisnes saya yang kecil-kecilan ini masih boleh bertahan sehingga sekarang. Keadaan semasa yang mencabar ini, ramai di antara kita yang terjejas pendapatannya. Bisnes tak jalan, ada yang kena potong gaji dan ada juga yang dibuang kerja. Bank Islam menawarkan moratorium selama 6 bulan atau 50% pengurangan ansuran bulanan juga selama 6 bulan. Semua permohonan yang tertakluk kepada prasyarat akan diluluskan secara automatik. Anda hanya perlu memohon. Lengkapkan e-borang di laman web kami atau hubungi pusat panggilan kami di talian 0326900900 atau hantarkan email ke contactcenter@bankislam.com.my. Sekiranya pegawai kami tidak dapat dihubungi, sila tinggalkan nombor telefon anda untuk kami hubungi semula. Bagi mereka yang mempunyai perniagaan sendiri, anda boleh lengkapkan borang permohonan di laman web kami atau terus hubungi pengurus perhubungan anda atau hantarkan email ke sme-assist@bankislam.com.my atau hubungi pusat panggilan kami untuk memohon. Jangan risau, rekod sikris anda tidak akan terjejas dengan permohonan ini. Jadi, mohonlah segera. Kami di Bank Islam sentiasa bersedia membantu pelanggan yang menghadapi kekangan di waktu ini. It is what we do. #callje Peringatan, program bantuan pembayaran pemulih adalah bagi membantu mereka yang terkesan dalam menghadapi pandemik ini. Jika kewangan anda masih stabil, anda dinasihatkan untuk menganalisa situasi kewangan anda sebelum memohon.